So there's a number of things that we usually like to get to our franchisees. And they're delivered throughout the conference in different manners by different speakers and some breakout sessions. The key messages are the shifting uh, changes into the consumers and the guest uh, base for all the restaurant industry and how that's impacting us. So it's important for us to let them know what's coming ahead and some of the plans that we are doing currently to get ahead of the game uh, and have things in place. So when they do hit us, we're more prepared. Sometimes they don't understand the, some of the stuff that we do. So it's important for us to let them know ahead of time the why, why we do what we do, and what's coming ahead of us, and what we are doing to get ready for all those shifts. So the new design uh, is focus is to make sure the model is profitable, period. Uh, it is profitable today, but uh, like I said, we have to look at a two, five, ten year outlook and understand the shifting behaviors of our consumers and make sure that the building meets all of their needs and also all of their future needs that they may know about it and they might not know about it. So you want to create something for them that they can have an emotional attachment to it and also meets current and future needs and also needs of the millennials, the 18 to 33 year olds uh, that are actually coming our way. Uh, we have a multi-generational uh, shift where we have a lot of baby boomers all the way to Generation Z entering our uh, food space and we have to make sure that we meet all of their needs. Uh, also the new design will address few areas that are still not working as efficient as possible for us. Like the patio for example and possibly some of the bar area uh, and also maybe some operational stuff in the kitchen and the prep areas. Off-premise is by large uh, one of the biggest shifts that we're seeing. It is coming at us, it's not going anywhere, and it's only going to continue to grow. So I don't believe it's a phase and it's going to go away. So it's definitely something that we've been keeping an eye on for the last couple of years. Uh, some of the initiatives that we have launched, we have an online ordering platform. Uh, we do have uh, delivery options at the stores that are uh, able to do it. We have integrated a lot of our systems with those third-party deliveries and online ordering. And we have also created uh, a separation for carry-out uh, doors. So consumers are not going to be entering in the same uh, door or exiting out of the same door. So for efficiencies, for ordering, uh, we have separated that entire platform away from uh, the guests that are dining in. So we sort of created a side business uh, that is integrated in the restaurant, but also separated in order for us to provide that club-level experience also to the guests that are not eating in the in our spaces. Other initiatives like the carry out packaging, uh, how we give it to the guest, how we take the orders, uh, we actually bag everything in front of the guest to make sure that they have everything they need. Uh, so we have looked at the entire journey of a guest from placing the order to picking it up to taking it home to unpacking it so the experience is a club level even at home. Same thing with third-party delivery. We have to make sure that they are carrying the package and delivering to our guest in the best possible manner. Uh, you know, we always do strategic planning annually, and we look at areas of opportunities where uh, we believe is needed to help the company grow and continue to evolve to the next level. One of the pieces we were missing is some sort of an integrator that would take the vision of the company, the vision of the CEO, and actually integrate it throughout the company and also throughout the franchise world. Um, and that position came up to be a chief operating officer. And we were just actually filled uh, by a gentleman named uh, Joe Dominiak, who started it last week. Uh, under his leadership, uh, we are going to combine several departments to provide the support that our franchisees may need. So the franchise operations, as well as the company operations, training, new store opening, and purchasing would be under one umbrella. So anything to deal with operations will be all under one umbrella. So it's a consistent service to the franchisees, an elevated service, additional support that they will receive. A uh, number of things. One, we have demonstrated over a 10-year path uh, a success story. Uh, our numbers speak volume. We have experienced success for 10 straight years. So if you would look at past uh, successes, they're one of the best indicators for future successes. So that's one element that the brand has experienced successes throughout the last 10 years. Uh, two, uh, you need to make sure when you're investing in a brand that you also understand 
the team dynamics, the vision of the company, and not just look at it as a snapshot of what's going on today. Because a lot of shifts happen, business is changing, everything's being disrupted. So you need to make sure you trust your money, you trust your investment with a team that has an eye for the current and also for the future. So you need to make sure you interview the team, the team members, and to make sure they have a mix of individuals that are looking out for your best interest today and tomorrow. And they're making decisions today that's going to impact your future tomorrow. You can't just take a snapshot of what's going on today with a brand and say, okay, that is something I want to invest in. You also need to make sure you look at what is the brand doing for the future to stay relevant and also continue to grow. And that's one of the unique things that we provide to our franchisees is the ability to work in today's environment and also continue to evolve and look for future relevancy. So today we have three company-owned stores, uh, and we're in the process of adding a fourth and a fifth and a sixth in the pipeline. Uh, we trust in our brand. Uh, we trust the success that it has. Uh, it's a, it's a, also a profit generation center. Uh, so that's one big, huge key investment that we continue to believe in our system and continue to grow our company-owned stores because we believe in the model itself. But not to a point where it's distracting us from the franchise operation. We are a franchise company. And we use our stores for to prove the concept, to make sure that it works, we understand the financials, and puts us a skin in the game. So that's one of the huge investments that we've been doing uh, year over year to our franchise system. The second investment that we do is in our people. We have one of the highest investments for any franchise system in people. We have more people supporting our units than any other brand out there. And that's a testimony to the brand that, and the support and the services that we provide to our franchisees, which we believe in the long term will actually pay out much better. But so that's the second huge investment that we do is investment in our people that support our franchise community. The fact that our model works, the fact that we're able to generate profit through our company stores uh, and being a multi-unit ourselves, the system is working. It's profitable. And it's a hands-off. There is no owner that sits at each one of those restaurants. So we have a model that is very attractive to a multi-unit that can have management staff run by operators and be successful and make lots of profits. Sometime an investor may look at the concept and evaluate it in different manners. If you look at it and evaluate it as a one-year investment, it may not look good on paper. Uh, but actually, the way you're supposed to evaluate it is over a 10-year period and look at the return over a 10-year period. I can make anything look good for a one-year period investment to get you in, but then you will struggle for the next nine. The way we evaluate and look at the investment ourselves, it's over a 10-year investment to make sure we buy in the right equipment, the right furniture that's going to last, the right design. We don't take any shortcuts just to save money on the front end. That's going to end up in the end costing you a lot more in operational efficiencies and not be profitable. So it's a two-way street. One, you got to look at the investment today, but you also got to look at the return that this investment is generating you over the 10 years, and that's how you evaluate the entire portfolio. And that's the way I would encourage any franchise, you're looking at any brand, not to just look at it as a snapshot investment for one year. It's a 10-year, 20-year investment, and you got to look at the entire return over a 10-year period and not just a one-year period. The value continues to grow. It's nothing but a future investment with returns at each stop gap. So you can exit at any point and be assured that your money is protected. Where if you look at it as a one-year investment, after one year, you don't know what the value of it. It could have diminished. It could have been zero. You could actually end up with a loan or a payment that would actually be a negative uh, investment versus a positive investment. Three most important things. One is the financial model, that return on your investment. And the biggest one I always tell everybody is the cultural alignment, the value alignment with the brand and the people that are running the brand. I encourage you to look at the executive team, at the extended team, the management team, franchise base, vendor partners, the entire spectrum of people you'll be dealing with and make sure there is a value and a cultural alignment with what you also believe in. Because if that does not exist, then the rest of it just does not work.